Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, I want to tell you, I was at Discover Sewing in Atlanta, Georgia this last week and had a ball with everybody. We had such a great event, and I got some very good questions that I thought I would answer today on our Project of the Week. I know that we're going to have a lot of lettering and monogramming and all of this coming up because the holidays are here. So I wanted to address one of the uh, first questions I got. When you have a letter, and let's just go in here and grab text, and let's, you notice there's an A stuck to my cursor, so let's left mouse click on screen, and let's create a letter. Um, let's just do a big letter, well let's do happy, oops, happy holidays. Now let's pick a font, this might be kind of fun to use. Let's kind of just audition some of these as I slide up and down them. I know I'm going to go to Fables. I really like that font. Now let's go to Fables and let's make this font about an inch tall. And let's look at it. So let's fit this to screen right now. Now this font I know is going to stitch out fine. If I come in here and hover, it says that um, my minimum height should be 0.2 inches and my maximum height should be 1.38. Well that's fine, but what happens when we need it bigger than that? So that's where we're going to talk here. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to change this Happy Holidays. And I'm going to change it to LQK, my monogram. And I'm going to make this 2 inches tall. Now the software has already told me that I shouldn't go over 1.38 inches. But now you can see I've created certain satin segments whose width exceeds the recommended maximum stitch length. What that means is this is too wide. Now I'm going to come in here and I just want to get my ruler and just kind of give you a little. Okay, now this actually is right at half an inch. It's a little bit less than, so your machine would actually stitch it. Um, but anything over 12.5 millimeters wide in a satin stitch where it has to tack at one end and tack at the other is too wide for the motion of your machine because of the revolution of your bobbin case. So anytime we start getting a little bigger than we should be able to, I don't want that longer, I want it both taller and I want to make it a little bigger proportionately. And I'm going to grab the arrow at the upper left-hand corner, hold my left mouse key, and make this just a little bigger. Now again, it's telling me I've created segments that are too big. Now what will happen a lot of times is it'll look fine here, but you'll go to stitch it out, and all of a sudden, you'll have a place that's bald. It'll, either your machine will stick, it, stick the needle in, and it'll go chick, 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 and stick the needle in. But when it comes back up, it didn't actually catch the stitch. So in that case, we're going to need to change the fill. Now there's a few things we can do. Now right here, I could come up here and change this whole thing to a fill. So I could pick a different fill stitch that would allow me, I wouldn't just have a satin, I would have to pick some other kind of fill. So I could come in here and pick smooth and apply. Now the minute I applied that, because it's a fancy fill basically, it's, it's not really, but it's got texture. We're not calling it a fancy fill. Let's click off of it. You can see I've put texture because I've had to have the, the needle click across. So if we look at here, we went from 4,400 stitches. We added about 10,000 stitches in here. That's a whole lot of stitches. Now, it's also a very large monogram. So if I was going to put this on a towel or something of substance, it would work. But the real question was, the actual question I was asked is, what if I wanted to make this into a split satin? So I'm just going to go back to where we, we're going to go back to our fills. And actually, I'll undo as my friend. I don't have to go to all that. Let's just undo. So now we're back to the regular satin stitch here. Well, no, we're not. Hang on. Undo is my friend. There we go. There we are. Okay, undo is my friend. So now I'm back at a satin. All right, so now if I wanted to make this a split satin, which means I want to cut this satin into put a line down the middle or maybe put a, like a rim on each edge to make this stitch correctly, 
I don't have that option. If I click on it, I don't have that option at all. I've got the fill, I've got underlay, and I can change push pull, but I can't go into the column stitch and change the satin to a split satin, a jagged satin. You get the idea. The reason being, this is text. This is a font. It is a keyboard font that we've typed into here, so it is treated very different. It's not treated like a design, it's treated as if it's a font. So I want to do a split satin, so I need to treat this as a design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, and you can see it says real clear, Kathy, this is text. So I'm going to right mouse click on it, and I'm going to say break up text. Now the minute I break up this text, if I click this little plus now, left mouse click, you can see now my software sees it as individual pieces. It's now a design. So it's no longer a font. I can't treat it as a font. So if I want to come in here to this L, I'm going to say, well, you know what? I want to go look at the column. You notice this now doesn't have text, text fill. Now it's just like a regular design. I'm going to go to column and I'm going to say, you know, I don't want to make it a jagged, so let's move on down. Let's go to split. I want a split satin. Now I can come in here and say, I want to make it a middle split, an absolute split, where I tell it I want it to be 25 and 75 or 10 and 90 percent. That's a percentage split, a random split. So let's go first. Let's look at a middle split. Now I'm going to go to apply and I can change this. I want my minimum stitch length at maybe about 0.2 and I want my maximum stitch length at 2.5. I mean I'm just making this up as I go along just so you know you can deal with these. I'm going to apply. Now you'll notice what I did. I told it to split it down the middle and go ahead and not make anything choppy or small. But look at how pretty this looks. And I only added about 600 stitches to this design rather than 10,000. So now let's grab the same letter and let's come into our split and let's say we want to do a random split. So let's do a random split and apply. Now it's split it in several different pieces but it's added quite a few stitches. It's added over a thousand stitches. So that's not helping me because I don't want to make this so stitch intensive that the design is like bulletproof. So let's come in here and let's now look at an absolute split. Now absolute says how far do I want to move in from the edges? Well I'm going to leave everything as its default right here and say apply. Now you can see it didn't do it very well. It's still saying that's too big Kathy. So let's come in and let's say absolute move in. Let's move in about five. Whoops, I said five. There we go. So let's move in that and see what we've got. And let's look at it. Now you can see it's got a little tiny, tiny, tiny edge here. So that's not going to cut it. So you're getting the idea of what we can do. We can change this. I'm going to say change this to two point now let's apply that and you can see it came in a lot farther. So, so far the good split has been that center split. Now I also can come in here and I can say let's do a percentage. So I may not want to do the, uh, the um, this five, I might want to say let's do percentage, let's go um, I don't know. Let's go point, let's go three. Let's go three oh. Let's just pick it. Now you can start seeing that was a little one. So we might want to go in a lot more. Just want you to get the idea of playing with this. If I'm doing a percentage split, I'm going to move in um, 10. Let's move in 10. Come here, you. Well, it wants me to use the little thing having a little bit of issue with my computer here. There we go. Um, let's move in. Let's move in 12.5. OK, 
okay. Hmm, something is crazy here. That doesn't look like it did very much. Did, did I remember to apply it? Got to apply. I did apply. Okay, let's see here. We're still good. Let's move in 25%. Now let's look at that. Now at 25%, it's still too small. But you're getting the idea here of what we want to do. So you can go through and play in here until you get exactly what you want. So it looks good. It does, ex oh, both ways. I'm sorry, that's what I need. I need on both sides. So that's too much. I apologize. Now let's see what we've got. Uh, we moved in on both sides, but not enough. So you get my idea, though. I want you to go in and play in this. and Well, undo is my friend. I don't know how I ditched that one. There we go. Undo is our friend. So, I mean, come in here and play with your split if you just want to work with the split. And we've already looked at random. We looked at percentage, absolute, middle, and none. So you can come in here and play with this, work it, and get a real nice look. But what you want to watch is this stitch count. You don't want to get uh, so big that it's bulletproof. But you can take your letters within the fonts. You can change the fill. Or you can go ahead and break up the text. And you can start manipulating just the satin stitch that's within the font. Having a lot of fun with this, but playing back and forth with all of this, how you want to work it. So that was one question I had. Now the other question I had was about if I've got, um, let me bring in just, um, let me come in here to my library. Let's go to my free monthly designs. I'm going to look at, uh, let me look at November 2016, see what they had for me. Uh, did I have any? Hmm, I think, let me see if you are all stitches or if your background Yes, let me see if this is, let me turn off the stitch ins. Okay, and let's turn this, there we go. Okay, that's to turn off your stitches. If you want to look at it without all the stitches, if you're trying to edit, let's turn it back on. And that's this icon on the left hand toolbar that has an eyeball and zigzag. You're turning on and turning off stitches. I'm looking to see if this is, let me look. Let's look and see what we got here. Let's come here. I'm holding down my redraw. Nope, I was seeing if this was going to be a applique, but it's not. So let's go back to our library. Let's go back to, I know I saw some just recently. And these aren't them either. We just want a nice applique design. Isn't that how it works? If you're trying to show something off. Let's go into May. See if I can get an applique out of there. Aha! Applique. This is an applique. I'm pretty sure. The cup, yes, the cupcake's an applique. So now I want to have my digital cutter cut my design for me, cut my pieces for this applique. I'm going to change my background so that you can see. If you look right here, there's a background color. It's the bottom icon on your left hand toolbar. I'm going to left mouse click on it. And I want to change the color of the background and I'm just going to change it to a light gray so we can say okay just so you can see where the applique is. Now this is my applique shape. We all agree that's what I'm looking for applique and I've also got applique going up here so you can see what I've got going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my placement line there and I'm going to take my placement line here so that's one placement line hold down my left mouse key and select the next placement line. I'm going to right mouse click copy. I'm going to open a new piece of paper. I'm going to right mouse click and paste. Now you can see I've got two little pieces here. So let's select one of them and let's move it down just a hair. Now what I want to do is I want my digital cutter to cut this out for me. I'm going to go to file export artwork. Now this is real important. You open a design and you save a design. You import artwork and you export artwork. If you're looking to get 
um, an image or you're looking to use a cutter so you can use FCM or SVG files, you're going to have to export it as artwork. You and I know these are stitches, but this software, our Floriani, will say, I can export this as artwork for you so you can make cutting files. So I'm going to say export artwork. Now it's asking me what type of files do you want, Kathy? Do you want SVG or do you want FCM? So you can pick for your brother scan and cut, you can pick for your cameo, your silhouette, that's personal preference. And then in this I would go ahead and put my cupcake shapes and then I would save that and now it has exported it so that if I want to cut that with my digital cutter, I can now put that on my USB, put it in my cutter and cut out all my applique shapes using my digital cutter. I'm telling you, these digital cutters are fantastic. I was really slow to get using them. And I'm going to tell you, once you get used to using your digital cutter, you will never go back to a pair of scissors and a piece of paper mirror imaging your images and everything. You'll just let that cutter do perfection, perfection, perf excuse me, I can't speak, perfect work so that you get perfection when you lay down these pieces. So I hope these answered two questions that a lot of other people had besides the questions I got asked at my class at Discover Sewing. I look forward to next week's project of the week. I hope you do too and have a great shopping season. Talk to you soon.